The Bitcoin Group, the American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. We'd like to welcome our panelists, Dan Eve, the Crypto Raptor. What's up, what's up, what's up? Josh Shigala from Voltoro. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm Thomas Hunt from the World Crypto Network. Moving on to issue one. Issue one, Bitcoin uses more electricity than many countries. How is that possible? Says the New York Times. Once again, the idea of energy is number one. Instead of talking about it, really, I think we should read this tweet from Michael Del Castillo. Michael says, I'm so tired of what feels like either willful ignorance or a concerted effort to make Bitcoin's energy use worse than it is. This is the new Bitcoin is for criminals argument. The energy consumption is bad, but fixable. And mistakes like this feel like a play for clicks. This is after Jeff Roberts tweeted a glaring error in the New York Times, yes, the New York Times, on Bitcoin energy use. The article suggests that every Coinbase transaction must be validated on the Bitcoin network and use energy. Not as not true as most Coinbase transactions are cleared internally and have been for like the last 10 years. Here we are again. Bitcoin is bad. It destroys energy. If you use multiplication, it could destroy the entire world. Dan, Eve, your thoughts on Bitcoin and the incredible energy consumption. Yeah, it's definitely the the energy thing's definitely the the kind of fud of the fud of the year, right? Or fud of the the, the last few years. Uh, obviously, energy uh, energy usage and environmentalism is quite a big thing. Obviously, you've got like extinction Rebe- rebellion at the moment in the UK, like holding up footpaths and bridges and stuff, and really important things like that. So everyone's really taking uh, taking the environmentalism into their own hands. But it's down to the definition of what your definition of waste is, right? They always they they, they always say that uh, in this article specifically they mentioned the new york times one they mentioned about the the waste right in securing the network but it's not waste because it's securing a network it, you know just because that hash didn't make it through it doesn't mean it's a wasted hash it, it was still an attempt at securing the network and it and it succeeded in assisting to secure the network otherwise if it was too easy it would use hardly any electricity and the network wouldn't be secure aha no one ever thinks of that when they write these articles but it's all down to personal preference isn't it right it's like it's just because they disagree with something um, then you can find any reason you want to disagree, to hate it. You know, it's like if, uh, if people used to moan about like annual, like mobile phone upgrades and stuff, that's a, a waste to someone, but to other people who need that split second of faster processing time, it's not waste, it's usage. Uh, if you have a car uh, instead of a moped, when, when it's just you, just yourself, and you don't really carry stuff about, then, you know, you're wasting in having a car instead of a moped. But, you know, there's comfort, there's extra, things that you have and with bitcoin it's securing the network um but uh just uh bef- before i finish one thing that's quite interesting for, from you know just because uh just looking back on new york times articles there's that famous one or infamous one from 1903 december 8th and it said and i quote man won't fly for a million years so uh don't believe everything you read in the new york times I agree with Dan. I don't. I don't think the New York understand. New York Times understands proof of work mining. I think that they look at that system and they say all the other miners who don't get the block are wasting their time. They don't understand that it's a competition to get that number and that that number is truth. Right? It's mathematical truth, and they're competing to get it. Once they achieve that, yes, all the other attempts are thrown out. But it's that competition that keeps the network secure, that keeps the next block timely, that makes this thing a race. Uh, So I don't think they understand that. Also, they continue to ignore the Galaxy Digital report that said Bitcoin used like one seventh of PlayStations and other always on devices. It uses one tenth of the banking system and it uses one tenth of the gold bullion system. So once again, if you're invested in the old system, you need to have a reason to hate Bitcoin. Your old reason was that it's only for drug dealers and criminals. 
that's not working anymore. You also used to say that you're going to lose all your money. It's going to zero. But instead, it went to 50,000 again, right? None of your old excuses are working. You need a new excuse. You've got your trusty friend multiplication. And if you multiply Bitcoin's energy use times a thousand, it's a thousand times bigger. And that's good enough for the headline, like Michael Del Castillo was saying. Uh, Josh Shigala, your thoughts on Bitcoin's incredible energy usage? Yeah, I mean, if you ha if you have a triathlon, you know, it's a bit of it's, a, it's such a waste of energy. They should just have this one guy, the winner. They should just have the winner running, and you just watch the winner run and then get the prize. Like, there's no point. Why have all these other people competing? That may <laughs> makes no sense. Um, yeah, look, this is such a such a tired, tired old conversation with these people, and they, they, they. It, it, it literally takes ten seconds of googling, because so many people that are serious in this space, like our, ourselves and many others, um, are constantly telling the logical and reasoned, evidence-based argument against their fud but they don't they just it's like la 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 like a child and uh so every time these sorts of articles come out i kind of you know i i of course i think oh, what a what a what a childish nonsense but the sad thing is when i think yeah but all those people that read it and then they parrot it and they just they just repeat uh this is generally the problem with the legacy media is that uh they can just say whatever because they're a, they're an authority you know, people will believe it and you sort of stuck with that and and it's uh, it's unfortunate but really um it uh people people start to take note when they when they're like yeah but so many people i know have made really good money from it so am i not going to buy it because i believe some nonsense article and uh, you know really the the whole playstation thing was a real eye opener for many, I mean, I, I, I pull that stat out and people are like, oh, oh, wow. I mean, washing machines, uh, like, you know, it, 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 <laughs> certain applications are really important in society. And the thing is, now that we're up against like a trillion dollar market cap, you can't just have a, a, a small competition to keep this thing secure. You need the best security because can you imagine these same people shouting about the energy usage? Imagine what they'd be shouting if everyone lost their money because of some 51% attack because suddenly, I don't know, ever. I mean, it wouldn't happen because it's game theoretically impossible. But if it did, they would just be, oh, look at all these poor people lost their money. Oh. Yeah, yeah, well, that's why you had all this energy usage, you, you know, tool. But anyway, that's... Uh, well, at, at least with that, it would be an actual thing where the people have actually lost their money and uh, the media could complain about it, Bitcoin or whatever coin had crashed or been hacked or whatever. They could say that it would be true. This one, once again, it's kind of fear, uncertainty and doubt. Bitcoin does use a lot of energy right now. We're all Bitcoin supporters. So we think it's a good deal. Like it's a good thing to build an alternative currency system. The current currency system is terrible. Uh, if you don't know that, you'd have no reason why that would be a good deal. Uh, the same thing going forward. Uh, if we switch to Bitcoin, it's just like when we switched to the internet. Some people didn't like it. They weren't ready for it. They wanted to wait. Uh, internet is too confusing. Internet leaves people behind. Internet, you know, make you blind. That monitor you're looking at will make you blind, but it hasn't happened yet. I'm still seeing. So uh, this is the media's new latest and greatest FUD. Uh, what other FUD do you guys see uh, for the media next? Obviously, I think... Uh, you know, terrorism is a big one. Uh, what else would you choose? Dan, uh, what will the media get excited about Bitcoin next? Maybe uh, Lady Gaga uses it, so it must be bad. Well, I think I think it might get take a trip back to the, the censorship lane, right? So, uh, so, uh, so if uh, people store or use it to transmit information that can't be censored, 
Uh, like there was that that uh, back in 2015, they were saying about the the child porn that was on Bitcoin, and you know that that's the you know have references or whatever. So I think something like that could happen. Uh, I think obviously the obvious one is terrorism. You know, it's used for terrorism. Like there'll be like you know the the, the you know the, the the plants in 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 Afghanistan of uh, of coal plants have been used, and they're no longer like providing electricity for humans. They're just mining Bitcoin and or something like that. It's it's I wouldn't say obvious, but it's uh, it's an it's something that probably could quite easily you know happen um but uh but yeah i think i think something like about the censorship right because what's what seems to be a hot topic now of course is that lots of people really like censorship like censorship and shutting people down and the cancel culture that we have is growing and it's uh, and you know you're getting armies of you know forums of people that are just clubbing together and every time they see a post from someone they don't like they'll shut them up by uh, doxing them putting their details out there finding out who who they work for getting them fired you know all that sort of stuff and so i think the censorship part might grow to the extent that um it gets used for some nefarious things and then gets blown out of proportion Censorship is an excellent pick. I also think there's something there in the idea of environmental terrorism. Like if the Taliban start burning a bunch of coal, like Stan's saying, even if they mine Bitcoin or if they just run air conditioners, they could burn enough coal to the point where we'd have to negotiate with them to pay them to stop burning the coal. It's a whole uh, new way of, uh, it's like a suicide bomber in an environmental vest or something. Uh, Josh Shigala, what will the media blame next? What's wrong with Bitcoin? Yeah, the, the um, yeah, of course. The the thing is, CBDCs, uh, which are central bank issued crypto, uh, crypto. I put that in big brackets. Um, once they are released, they will release a massive, uh, just an onslaught of fud. They will pull out the 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 child porn. They'll pull out the the terrorism. They'll pull out environmentalism. They'll pull out um, the 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 uh, ransomware like you've never seen it before, like the worst ransomwares ever. Whole hospitals and police stations and this and that, and and people will have to pull back like, oh, I'm not invested in. Oh, what you're making money off all this evil? How dare you? Don't invest in it. Um, it it'll it'll get really really intense uh, in terms of the the fud because. Really, in terms of major news, um, uh, we, we've seen we've seen that you can algorithmically uh, censor the net very, very well, um, and and so this is coming. This is coming. Um, it, it doesn't take much if you if you've got control of Reuters, if you've got control of a few key media partners, if you've got control of some top echelons at, at Google or Facebook. Uh, you can algorithmically censor anything you want, and uh, and then you have basically the whole narrative sorted. So um, it, it will happen once these CBDCs come out, uh, these central bank issued currencies. We're we're going to see a hell of a lot of fud. So I think it's it's going to be everything. It's going to be the whole lot, and people have just got to go. Not not money is money. Terrorists also wear shoes. I wear shoes. Um, it's it's not evil or good it's a thing it's a money and uh, this this doesn't make any sense and i really want people to remember this conversation when it does happen because it will happen just want to give a shout out to the handful of people watching us live now if you're watching this later on you'll be able to push a thumbs up on youtube uh, right now it looks like restream it is failing for the second week in the row so i'm going to contact them and cancel this software get a refund whatever i have to do because it's obviously absurd if you can't fix it in a week uh, and you're not even telling your customers there's a problem uh, so apologies to youtube this will be downloaded and uploaded later uh, so you have to give us a thumbs up then thanks so much for sticking with us through this uh, restream it issue moving on to issue two Issue two, Bitcoin price tops 50K in September push. Bitcoin is hitting September at a good clip. The largest cryptocurrency by market value rose above the $50,000 level Friday for only the fourth time in the last four months. Seems like a lot of times. Bitcoin is at the highest intraday level since August 23rd, 2021, when it hit 50,000. 477. 
Josh Shigala, the price of Bitcoin going up forever, leading all the other altcoins on the way. Uh, no more bear market. Everything is good. Go ahead, Josh. Unmute. All right. Um, yeah. The the <laughs> a lot of a lot of what's happening is uh, is inflation as well as the price discovery of this technology. Uh, where where where. And one of the biggest things that turns institutions around is when it hits an all-time high, it collapses back down, and then it comes back up and hits it again. That's when they're like, huh, I thought it was going to die this time. And every time that happens, people realize, okay, these, these are just cycles, and the technology is still here after so many years, more than a decade. Um, and uh, and is stronger than ever. So yeah, I you know now that we've got countries coming on board, um, <laughs> 50k is still cheap. Dan Eve. Yeah, it's wild to be back over 50. But for, for, is this fourth time? Did you say that we're fourth time over 50? It's popped under and back over. You know, so I think that's the 50s kind of 50s. 50s the new 20, right? It's the new, it's the new when it's it's the new three. It, it you keep on top, you know, toppling up just above that little line, and then eventually it's going to pop off again. And Josh made a really good point that obviously we went to an all time high, it dipped down, we went back down to you know what was it the late 29s or, or something like well, at least the early 30s. Um, but now people's ears are pricked up. They're like, hey, it didn't die. I, I, I thought it was going back to zero. That that dude that predicted something once said that it was going to zero. Uh, it hasn't. Maybe maybe they were wrong. Um, the fact is that, again, as Josh said as well, it's so resilient. Um, we've, we've lost you know 80% after an all-time high and still come back up and been higher. Um, so the idea that it's it's dead or it's it's dying is definitely you know it's just not the case. Especially as more infrastructure is being rolled out, countries are adopting it. You know the recent one is is now Panama, right? Panama seems like it's on the cusp of uh, uh, another another country that's dependent on the dollar. Um, and now Panama seems to be on the cusp of, of, of potentially saying, look, we'll, we'll adopt it as legal tender. Um, they're probably waiting a, a bit to see how it pans out for El Salvador and, uh, and whether everything kind of goes off with, a, to, with fireworks or whether it's kind of a, quite a smooth transition. Um, but uh, who knows? You know, there's there's what five, six other countries um, in South America alone dependent on the on the on the dollar. So um, we'll see how uh, we'll see how the experiment happens in in El Salvador, and uh, see you at hundred k. It is pretty surprising every time Bitcoin does this go down and come all the way back up again. Uh, seeing fifty k again, it's it's that old thing in your head that once Bitcoin sold for fifty k. It always has the possibility of going back to that price. Like it's it's never sold for a hundred k, but if it did sell for a hundred k and it went down, it could always go back there. It seems to have that power where once it establishes a, a high high, and it's absurd at that time, and you probably didn't sell, it might be back at that high high a few months or a few weeks later. Uh, so it's great to see this again, and uh, it's also interesting to see the altcoins following back up as well. Some of them reaching even higher. Uh, Ethereum's up about 20, 30% this week. Uh, incredible gains for the altcoins as well uh, as Bitcoin leads the way. Moving on to the exit question, uh, where you will compete against the Bitcoin predictor ball, truly the greatest predictor of Bitcoin price in all of Bitcoin. Uh, this ball has been predicting Bitcoin before plan B and the stock to flow model. And it's still, it says that Bitcoin's always going up. It's amazing. Yeah. Like you it's need a shake model. model. You need a model and a chart and a bunch of triangles to tell you that Bitcoin's always going up. Dan, Eve, the price of Bitcoin this time next week, higher or lower? Only up. Josh Segala, higher or lower? The only way is up. Magic Bitcoin eight ball, predictor ball. Will the price of Bitcoin be higher this time next week? Yes. Well, you don't get any more equivocal than that. It says yes. Nothing else. Just yes. Check out the WCN Clips channel. Google WCN Clips and subscribe. We're up to 67 subscribers. Very strong on our way to 100. 
Uh, looks like people are starting to view these and share these. Uh, we even have ones right here from last week with Gabriel Devine, Martin, Josh, Dan, myself. Everybody's here on the WCN clips. Yeah, so it's a treasure trove. If someone picks on the whole uh, energy mining, you know, problem, there are so many in there about energy and mining. You can just grab that, throw them at it, and tell them to shut the hell up. <laughs> That's right. Moving on to issue three, El Salvador. Bitcoin will soon be legal tender in El Salvador on September 7th, just four days away. The government's even going further, promoting the cryptocurrency by giving $30 in free Bitcoins to citizens who sign up for the national Bitcoin wallet known as Chivo or Cool in English. Foreigners who invest three Bitcoins in the country will be granted residency. But wait, what kind of country would you live in in El Salvador? Anti-Bitcoin law activists arrested in El Salvador. El Salvador police have arrested activist Mario Gomez, a vocal critic of the Bitcoin law, which makes Bitcoin legal tender. Yes, he was arrested, told the newspaper they were unaware of the reason for the arrest. They sent the SWAT team to compensate, to uh, confiscate his computer. This is one of the problems of living in a dictatorship. Uh, Dan Eve, El Salvador, Bitcoin paradise or Bitcoin dictatorship. Uh, don't step out of line. Don't spit on the sidewalk. Uh, be careful where you chew gum. Okay, every other scumbag. Usually I I'd, uh, I'd think it's really bad when someone gets arrested by the government for getting in the way of something. But because they're rolling about rolling out Bitcoin, I'll turn a blind eye. Uh, I, I've, I'll, I'll go on the side, you know, I'll uh, what's the what's the word? I'll uh, err on the side of caution and think that he probably was doing something naughty. So uh, I trust the El Salvador government since they're rolling out Bitcoin, because that is a sensible thing. Um, but, you know, it's it's going to it's, it's obviously really bad. Right. You know, the, you want Bitcoin to be rolled out legitimately. The last thing you want is for the world to think that they're. There is, you know, a nefariousness in rolling out Bitcoin. You know, if Bitcoin's already got bad things attached to it, then, you know, you don't want uh, it being rolled out with the news that people are being uh, jailed for no reason just for speaking out about it, right? Because Bitcoin's um, brilliance is in its resilience, uh, which rhymes obviously and um and the fact <laughs> and the fact is that it can it can you know it can uh, shrug off and certainly the price of the infrastructure that's being built shrugs off the rumors about um nefariousness or the rumors about at uh, the environmental impact um so yeah i think it's it's sad in a way that, that that's actually happened because you almost want the el salvador government to prove the person wrong rather than just arrest them for something but that's kind of what they do in in small government type places um the fact is it's probably going to bring bring in a lot of investment i mean i'm not sure what the power of an el salvadorian uh, passport is but you can you know you'll essentially get one for three free bitcoin right um it'd be interesting to see how what it does to the exports in el salvador if they're um encouraging more services to accept bitcoin then you know you, you, for, for for bitcoiners people like to you know catch Cash out in in Bitcoin, right? It, by buying goods and, and services directly. So if uh, if there's more um, services being offered uh, and and goods, for example, from El Salvador, then you know even if they're at a premium, it might send exports through the roof and be really good for their economy. Um, and obviously, people are moaning about the fact that it's taxpayers that will be paying for some elements of the the buyback process, the selling into dollars. Um, but unfortunately, taxes largely get wasted on crap anyway. So, you know, at least if it's bringing making the country wealthier, um, then uh, yeah, then then it, there's a kind of flip side to the fact that some some taxes are being used to to um, uh, to fund the development of Bitcoin with infrastructure within El Salvador. Josh Shigala. I was um, really disappointed with this. Like I, I was going to head over there. I was going to give a tour. I was really excited, um, but I'm not going to support that. I, I look, I obviously I don't agree with this gentleman. Uh, I think it's a great thing uh, for anyone to accept and make legal uh, something that's so brilliant. But to arrest someone for having a point of view and a loud one even 
is is so uh, deplorable and goes against everything that the Bitcoin network is even about. It's about immutability, the concept of being immutable. Stop muting people. You muted that guy. What? Because he he said something you didn't like. What kind of a what kind of a like? Uh, what's wrong with you, man? Like I'm t- I'm talking to the to the dictator here, and that's what you are. Like if you called this personally, what are you doing, man? Like have some self reflection. If you really believe in this technology, there's no need to to arrest someone. You just say, oh, well, you know, it's an interesting point of view, and let people discuss it. He's not hurting anyone. What's your problem? It's 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 absolutely deplorable, and you should take a big, long, hard look at yourself because you're not a credit to your family name. You're a shame to your family name. That's what I have to say about that. And it's sad now. I can never go to El Salvador. She. The article went on to say that Gomez participated in several forums and video conferences detailing what he considered to be risks and flaws associated with the implementation of the Bitcoin law. He was also credited with leaking the details of the country's cryptocurrency wallet, which was created by the government to control the dollar to Bitcoin exchange process and is promoted as the official Salvadorian Bitcoin wallet. He pointed to several design features which concerned him, including the fact that the operating cost of the zero fee service would be paid for with tax money. As Josh was saying here, it does seem like the dictatorship part of El Salvador is rising to the top. Now, earlier when we covered the stories about El Salvador, we went to the Wikipedia and we read about how he came to power. He took power. Right. This is a dictatorship. He took power. He punished his enemies. His enemies shut up. And now he's in power. Uh, So this was never a very good fit for Bitcoin. In fact, in the beginning, we warned people that the dictator may seem to look as a goal of topping what the dictator in Ukraine did or perhaps the dictator in Russia. They're sneaking out millions of dollars. They're sneaking out millions of dollars through bank accounts and bank systems and all these complicated ways, right? And at the end of the day, the Ukrainian president couldn't take his fancy house with him. And on the day of the revolution, the people busted into the house and and they were in awe. They didn't smash it other than the doors and the windows and such to get in. But once they got in, they, they filed by and they looked at the wealth that their president had and they tried to understand it in the concept of their own lives. And I fear with this dictator, with the Bitcoin, if the cash grab successful, you can fit a lot of Bitcoin in a briefcase. You can fit a lot of Bitcoin in a knapsack or a journal or a piece of paper or anything. And it's possible that we're talking about this in a few months or a few years about the entire wealth of the country going out the back door, which again, it's a dictatorship. He already owns all the power. He already owns all the wealth. There's a difference between inside the United States or inside the European Union and and outside. If you look at the Free State Project, the New Hampshire people, they didn't really want them and they haven't been nice to them, but they never arrested them just for being free staters. They never arrested them just for having their opinions. They arrested them when they messed with the system and all that kind of stuff, which is a gray area. This guy shouldn't have been arrested, but it's not a surprise if you know anything about El Salvador. And I think it's important for Bitcoiners that we don't do this again. Uh, I know Dan's excited about Panama. That might be the one or some other country, but it's going to take a developed country adopting Bitcoin to get us where we want to go. We're not going to be able to substitute that with some undeveloped country that's just not in the position to do it. Like we're putting them up on a pedestal and I fear that we're setting them up for failure to the point that they might not be successful. So watch out for El Salvador. We'll see what's happening soon, but it's good that at least there's one place uh, that's covering it reasonable where this doesn't stick out to you. This isn't a big surprise uh, for us. This is unfortunate. I wish it didn't happen. I hope he gets out of prison for expressing his idea like we do on this show. Like when we expressed our ideas about Bitcoin eight, 10 years ago, whatever, when we started the show, we could have been arrested if we were in a country that didn't like Bitcoin. We could have been jailed, our computers taken, charges pressed, Lawyers needed a huge hassle, right? All the time. Instead, 
they just let us say whatever we want on the internet so far so good uh in this country uh, that we're this in. is the this is the important thing this goes all the way back to you know magna carta this goes this is the the idea of expressing this is also the the base of of sci of the scientific method uh, as well uh, is by expressing doubt uh, and and working through issues. It's something that's core to to human evolution and and the evolution of ideas. And and uh, I'm, you know, El Salvador, do the right thing, man. Like you're doing a you're doing a good thing by bringing this on board. You you can save yourself, but don't do stuff like this. This is really not good, man. This is really not good. This isn't what Bitcoin stands for. And anyone that is in Bitcoin cheering them on after this sort of uh, deplorable act, uh, I would say you know just cool your boots, man. Well, remember the, the incompatibilities between democracy and dictatorship. Uh, democracy demos the people, will of the people, right? The people can overthrow whatever the dictator wants. Sometimes the people make a horrible mistake. Sometimes they correct their mistake. Sometimes they make new mistakes. Uh, we go with it because democracy is the will of the people. And of course, the founding fathers debated that and they had different opinions and they weren't really crazy about the, the raw will of the people. But here we have the exact opposite. We have the raw will of one person. He is in charge of that country. Uh, if you look back to when he launched the Bitcoin law, he decided they would have a Bitcoin law. It wasn't really the Senate or the legislator or whatever. He decided this would be good. And at the time, a lot of Bitcoiners were like, oh, this is fine. You know, he's just stomping on everyone's freedom, but for the thing that we like, right? And you can't do that. You have to have the freedom and the thing that you like. You can't just have the thing you like. You're never going to get there. Uh, it's going to be a much, much, much harder road. So let's keep an eye on this. Uh, exit question, which country is ready for real Bitcoin adoption? Not this kind of backdoor instituted by a dictator adoption. Dan, Eve, where do you see real Bitcoin becoming popular? popular but not by central banks right like, you know and uh, uh, so that's kind of a lot of europe that's out out of it right because the, no one's going to go against the the ecb otherwise they'll be like you know sanctioned out of the eu or something like that um i i, I don't know i don't think there's there's many places where it it, it is going to be a, a massively developed country that's pushing it forward because all the developed countries have got central banking infrastructure um, that are pushing their own crap, right? They're pushing their own shitcoin. So they're not going to let Bitcoin go through. Um, so I think it will be the smaller countries until it snowballs um, and, and breaks a, a big one eventually. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't certainly don't see that being, say, you know, part of Europe, for example, or obviously North America, Canada, it might be somewhere in, in the East or Middle East that, that, that does it. Joshua Shigala. Look, the, the, the Bitcoin was made by the internet for the internet. It, uh, the internet, cyberspace, whatever you want to call it, is a place. When I go to the UK, I use pounds. When I go to the US, I US, use US dollars. I use uh, euros in Europe. Like, yeah, whatever you think of that, they're shit coins. <laughs> they're, they're fiat, they're filthy, they're, they're, they're printed out of nowhere. They're, they're, they're a disgusting system. I don't like it. But when I'm on the internet, I use Bitcoin, I use Ethereum, I use crypto. I, I, I'm not going to like be bothered with any of these countries that say, oh, now I have a, 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 a framework so you can pay your taxes in, in crypto or Bitcoin or what. Well, I, I don't care. Like um, I'll pay up, you know, Bitcoin's there to save anyway, to hodl. Uh, it's, I hope that there are cryptos that are also decentralized that are there to, to use as currency. But generally, I think the consensus among many Bitcoiners is that it's a store of value over time. So, um, you know, really, it's, it doesn't need governments. It doesn't need institutions even. It doesn't need any of that. It just needs the internet and voluntary people to come along and go, Hey, you know what? I'll um, I'll write you an article for Bitcoin, or I'll uh, 
you know, do some graphic design for Bitcoin. I'll code, I'll code you that website for Bitcoin. It doesn't need all this extra complexity and, and legacy system uh, attaching itself. Sure, it will have it because the, the whole system is crumbling in on itself globally uh, after the ridiculous uh, shenanigans every country is pulling at the moment. So uh, there's, there's really no option but to head into Bitcoin. So we'll see. I, I, think, it's a, I think it's actually a very clever move of El Salvador. I, I think it's an extremely intelligent move because um, it, it, as the world crumbles, and everyone there has got $30 worth of Bitcoin that opens a wallet. Um, if they hold on to that, um, you know, as a country, uh, the, 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 they, they could definitely see them their their value rise in terms of uh, you know net uh, positive value. Uh, I'm I'm still holding out hope for Japan. A highly technical society, so into video games. They have that neighborhood that's all video games and neon lights. Uh, it has to come from the people. We've talked about before how Overstock.com accepted Bitcoin back in the day, but they had to convert it into cash because they couldn't pay their suppliers to buy more widgets in Bitcoin. Uh, we've said on the other side how the consumers wanted to use it, but there was nowhere to use it. It has to come from both sides at the same time. So the suppliers and the businesses have to be ready at the same time that the populace is informed and ready to use it. And when I think about that, I think about a technological place. I think about a place that's leading in chips and designs and video games and stuff like that. And I hope it will be Japan. I've never been there. I don't know if it's actually what I, I think it's like, but based upon what they told me in the 80s, Team Japan. Here we yeah, go. I mean, th this is where a dictatorship actually helps because the dictatorship gets rid of the, the uh, chicken egg problem of just no everyone but because when something becomes legal tender i i'm pretty sure i don't know it's, it's in like this in, in the westminster systems in the you know in the, in, uh is that once it's legal tender you by law have to accept it so if someone comes to your shop and says i want to pay with this and there's this old thing i'm not sure if it's true but apparently you can use stamps it's a legal tender you can use government issues stamps but uh i've had friends try that on the bus and it didn't go very well so <laughs> yeah a dictatorship does help uh but it's much like star wars it's the the quick and easy path leads to the dark side and i think that's going to come in as well on this next issue where we talk once more about twitter tipping Issue four, I think this is. Issue four, Twitter tipping is back. Twitter is allowing profiles to have Bitcoin addresses. They're talking about the Lightning Network, and it looks like they're bringing back change tip all over the place. This must be especially painful for people who worked at change tip or invested. I know change tip had meetings with Twitter back in the day. I think they got all the way up to Jack. I imagine they told Jack that, Twitter tipping was the thing and they had the solution. They had lots of users using it. They had lots of spam that was going around. Uh, but the problem is they had that good old centralized database running the whole thing. It was never a good idea. Now Twitter has the lightning network. They might even have the option not to hold people's twits uh, or their tips, <laughs> tips for tweets, uh, not to hold their tips. And it might work this time. Dan, Eve, your thoughts on Twitter tips back again? Well, yeah, there was uh, obviously um, a change tip. Or like, was it change tip? Sorry. Yeah, back in the day, there was there was also like, uh, uh, what, what was it? Like uh, people, rumors in 2017 that like Redcoin was going to be the one for, for Reddit. And so tipping has kind of been, been in the you know in the sphere for a while right and um and it's a shame that obviously changed it was a centralized service now there's lightning which is the decentralized version obviously of or decentralized layer of bitcoin uh, and obviously the, the the transaction fees are so cheap it's uh it's a lot more feasible to roll out especially if it's twitter themselves rolling out as infrastructure obviously jack's heavily heavily uh endorsing bitcoin in general but also putting a lot of money into bitcoin development um, and, uh, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's a positive thing. Obviously it sadly relies on the fact that 
um, Twitter is a centralized service, right? So, uh, but uh, then again, we've heard rumors, and I think Jack even said himself that he wants Twitter to be decentralized eventually. So, I wonder what that would mean for for censorship. Actually, what what would uh, will they decentralize the censorship that goes on? Uh, will you have these kind of elected Snopes officials that will censor things or something like that? And fact checker, um, I don't know. I, I don't know how that will evolve, but certainly it's good for the ecosystem being able to tip someone who makes a, a, a good comment or provides information um, um yeah i see it as, i see it as a positive thing now we got in a lot of trouble back in the day for being critical of change tip so i want to go ahead and address this right up front i think it's a big deal that change tip was just making their own centralized database they were recreating what bitcoin already does so well they had the ability to access everyone's accounts. They had the ability to steal everyone's money. Uh, these are not acceptable trade-offs in the time. They could have used a more Bitcoin-based system, but obviously as we saw the fees take off a few years later, that would have destroyed their company. Now, Lightning Network wasn't really available at the time. It wasn't even an idea yet. It was still you know, gestating. But now that we have Lightning Network, it looks like Twitter can take those key parts of change tip that we disagreed with, centralized control, ability to control everyone's tips, abilities to steal everyone's tips, all of that, and they can put it into the Lightning Network where they wouldn't have so much control. So technically, it's a better time for it. The other thing we complained about with change tip was all the spam. You'd get a message about how you got a tip. You'd get a message about claiming your tip. You'd get another message. You could send all these messages for 10 cents. It was the greatest spam tool imaginable. You could probably even send them for a penny. You could send like five messages to someone for a penny. You know, people weren't looking at the spam aspects. Uh, and while Twitter did turn on some kind of a tip jar a few months ago, I don't think I've gotten a single tip. Uh, so there is something to be said about that spam. It does kind of generate the the visual, the eyeballs. I don't know. Twitter might be able to fold it into the product better because they have control of the buttons and the interface. Maybe they can make it less spammy. Uh, generally, I think this is good. Uh, but I also want to remind people of the story from the time that really helps you understand this. There was a um, a Reddit where lawyers very well off people get paid hundreds of dollars an hour, have a specialized knowledge that they've built up over time. Lawyers were volunteering and giving out free legal advice. And then someone from change tip went in there and tipped them $5. It's not about the $5. The lawyers have lots of money. It's about actually giving back as a good thing. Not everything has to be monetized. Like trying to put a $5 on that interaction cheapens it because the lawyer doesn't need the money wasn't asking for it or looking for it. And, and $5 is far too low. It should be hundreds, you know, and, and that's why it's not being asked for. So we have to worry about changing all of our human interactions to, oh, you liked my tweet. I should give you a penny. Like, you can like my tweets because they're good. You know, you can retweet them because you want to share them, not because you're going to get a penny or a nickel or whatever it is. So we have to watch for that commoditization of all human experience. Uh, which they were very much into, and, and a lot of other marketing people. Uh, that's, a, that's a good dollar right there, as Bill Hicks would say. Uh, Joshua Shigala, your thoughts on the return of change tip, as it seems. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Th th I remember one of the most offensive sort of things would be, you know, someone would write a big article or something would happen on Reddit, and, and then a change tip would come in for like, uh, you know, one quarter of a cent. And I, and if you're a hardcore Bitcoiner, you're like, yeah, stack and sats, cool. Because I know in, in like uh, 10 years time, like right now, that would probably be worth 500 bucks or something. So be happy. But at the time for normal people, they're like, what the hell? It's kind of like, I remember typing and saying, hey, God, dude, can you at least tip the guy like a buck? Like throwing less than a cent. It's like going up to a busker who's playing really good music and going, oh, and, and throwing one cent into the bushes next to him and going, there you go, and walking up. Like it, it's, it's, an, it's offensive almost. Like it becomes the opposite of thankful. Uh, it's kind of weird. But, um, but yeah, uh, it, we didn't have the Lightning Network. Uh, what I am a little bit concerned about is sort of centralization of massive nodes that everyone sort of plugs into Twitter's nodes and then uh, data correlation through Twitter 
um, across those nodes. Of course, the, uh, the good thing is the eyeballs, people will start to build up uh, and, and anyone can start a node. So what I'm saying here isn't fired. You can actually just see it happening and fire up your own node that plugs into the um, in, into uh, Twitter's node and, uh, and plugs into thousands of others. So you can be a, a bridge. Um, and, th and this is the hope that the, that the network grows out and out. And the other day I paid for a book in, with Lightning, 25 bucks, and by the way, and it just went, <laughs> it, was, it was like, blomp, there it is, tick. No waiting, no nothing, pre-confirmed. Like uh, I've had this channel open for so long. So it's got so many confirmations. No one's double spending that. <laughs> You know, it was as a block, there it is. And it's uh, pre-confirmed by thousands and thousands of blocks. So uh, really uh, great technology. I'm, I, I, this is actually makes me more excited than any country accepting Bitcoin. I think um, uh, Twitter jumping on the, the tip, tip wagon. I think it's, it's the old school. You know, there was another, it, it opens up a lot of stuff as well. As, as people start to see, this, uh, it, they get inspired. So um, Satoshi Pay is another great service that used to be on Bitcoin and they invented some great stuff over here in Meinhard in, 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 in Germany. He, um, he invented this fantastic tool where you could, instead of having a paywall uh, for an article, which no one, everyone hates because you have to pay for an article you haven't read yet. You pay for it, it lets you see it, and then you have, first you have to sign up and put your credit card and all this nonsense. So that's a massive break. Then you finally see it and it's a crap article. And you're like, oh, I wish I didn't read that. What he invented was a great way where it would, um, it would show you the first two paragraphs. And then as you scroll down, it would flip every paragraph over. And the more you scroll down, uh, it would keep flipping. And every flip uh, from a gray box to the actual paragraph would release uh, a few satoshis from the wallet and was just a blah 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 and unfortunately he had to use um so he had to go off and use some other altcoin because uh, bitcoin's fees just got crazy but now with the lightning network i hope that this will inspire companies like him his and and others to be able to use bitcoin again uh for that because it is the safest network um and it is the original network so uh you know let's let's see what happens but uh yeah, super, super exciting news. I'm really, I really can't wait to test it out. I want to agree with what Josh said about the problems with uh, Twitter being centralized and that they might have to track these tips. They might have to censor or control these tips. Uh, the same problem came about at early PayPal. Uh, when PayPal was looking at what to do back in the day before eBay, before all that stuff happened, they kind of wanted to make a currency like Bitcoin. And they understood right away that if you took that currency out of the PayPal wallet and you put it on your computer and you send it directly from your computer to someone else's computer, PayPal has no control over that transaction. The same thing is true for Twitter. Uh, what we're thinking of is something that would be fun for YouTubers or artists or people like us to raise money. Uh, that'd be great, right? But at the same time, as we talked about earlier, the bad people could also use it to raise money and Twitter's a business. They can't be, they could be held responsible if the bad people raise money on their service, use it to do bad things. Twitter is the middleman. So it's very interesting to see how they implement this, how they put some controls on this. And again, we need to know why they're putting these controls. They're putting these controls because they could be held responsible in the legal system for anything done badly with money. Yeah, and there's Twitter. Absolutely. And there's some simple things that Twitter can do right now to help with Bitcoin, like really simple things like in the reporting section, have us have a thing saying crypto, uh, uh, crypto scam report, because right now you, you, there's not even that. So if someone's saying, send me uh, some crypto and I'll send you double back, which so many people fall for, sad to say. But if, if I see that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to report it. And it's like, this is harmful or this is, there's a whole bunch of things, but nothing is like, this is trying to steal someone's Bitcoin or someone's crypto. So just simple things like that. Uh, I wish they would implement. Um, it's, it's quite an easy move. Well, it's interesting that the ground that they're laying their seeds upon, Josh is right. It's full, it's full of fake Twitter accounts. It's full of, uh, you know, imitation scams. It's full of, you know, send me money, get a hundred thousand dollars back type scams. 
And now they're going to give all these people crypto wallets and the ability to send some kind of lightning Bitcoin or something from point to point. So uh, very dangerous, uh, very exciting for the country, for the company. And moving well into the exit question, will Twitter tips be successful? Will it bring about the ecosystem that they desire? Dan Eve. I think it's going to have some humps, some obstacles. Uh, I think it will be taken advantage of in certain ways. They'll probably be some you know so the, the the latest scam will be like uh, focused around i think at the moment there's a, the one that's just everywhere is like bonus matic or bonus polygon scam and it's just on everything hundreds it's like the new ten thousand ethereum so maybe they'll find a way to take advantage but it's just like the you know when when they card issue has rolled out the nfc on cards and you know there, there were certain people who had the readers and they'd like tap you on the train or whatever and they take 20 20 pound transaction but then eventually you get around that they have measures in place uh and and they they you know deal with these obstacles and deal with these hurdles so i think ultimately you'll be successful they'll they'll be fud when it rolls out and there'll probably be some scandals here and there um but i think i really i think you know josh made a really good point that it's probably better than uh, a country adopting bitcoin because you know, Twitter is ubiquitous. It's around the world. You can hook in from anywhere. And if you can uh, send money to someone um, just via, a, you know, a Twitter account and they can use that to pay for goods and services, that's a that's a huge thing. And it's also desensitizing people to the idea of Bitcoin being bad. You know, Twitter wouldn't implement Bitcoin Lightning if, um, if uh, well, I say desensitize, that's a, probably a bad word for it, but, you know, but it makes it familiar, right? It, it, it takes it out of the realm of, oh, it's crazy internet money that you can't use anywhere or you can't do anything with to, oh, I can literally receive Bitcoin right now on my Twitter account, you know? So I think it's a, I think it's a great step and um, it will be successful in the long run, but it will have its hurdles like uh, any new technology adoption and implementation does. Josh Agala. Yeah. Um, I've forgotten the question. I was just listening to Dan. Will Twitter tips be successful? All oh, right. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, it, it, it won't be, it, it'll take a while to spread. So what will be interesting is uh, how long it takes for small amounts um, because you can go sub Satoshi in, in Bitcoin. So uh, in Lightning, sorry. So, so it'd be really, really interesting to see at the first seed what happens from all the people that do have Bitcoin and, and to watch it for, uh, crawl out and, and, and spread across the network. I'm really looking forward to the visualizations. Uh, hopefully they have really good APIs so that people can build visualizations on top of it and, and see what's happening there uh, across the network. Um, that, that would be really, really good uh, if Twitter could release those and, uh, and we could, because otherwise all you see is like, oh, you know, he's got uh, 16 hearts and uh, 12 Satoshis. Uh, and it would be cool if you could set like every time you heart, you give a Satoshi or something. Just, I don't know, it would just be cool to watch this going around. And, uh, you know, one Satoshi is worth, uh, uh, you know, one uh, in some countries, one cent now. Uh, which country was it? The Czech, Czech Republic. Uh, I just saw that. Uh, yeah. So. Well, that, that's the place where it takes like 3000 to buy a soda or something. So, yeah. 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 Well, uh, at least we're a penny somewhere. Uh, I, I mean, I think it'll work. It'll work technically. Like I believe in the Twitter engineer's ability to build this software. I don't think they're going to screw it up. Uh, but I've had a lot of time to think about Twitter tips and tips in general. And I worry about introducing monetary instruments into this conversation. We have this conversation going on Twitter. You, you like my posts because they're good. You retweet them. You reply if you think of something clever to say, or maybe we have an agreement or you're like, oh, I did that too. Or I had that happen as well. And we have a conversation back and forth. It has nothing to do with money. But the minute you institute money into it, it's like someone replies and they say, good job. I really liked your tweet. But someone else replies, they say, good job. And they give you a dollar. Which response is better, like the dollar or the one with the more information, right? We have to look at how this might cheapen our conversation, how it might change our conversation. I know we already have people, company, media, other people that are looking for clicks, right? And they're looking for tweets and there's all kinds of tweets in Bitcoin where it's like Bitcoin price going to the moon and it's by a pretty girl and it gets 500 retweets, right? Well, maybe yeah. she also gets 500 bucks in the future. I mean, is it better? Is it worse? Are they paid? Are they paying people? I think it just, it changes the conversation. You've got something 
what I think of as relatively organic on Twitter, although there is a lot of bots and there's a lot of fake accounts, but I think we have an organic conversation there. And I worry what the influence of money on a large scale could do to our conversation. But again, I don't yeah. think we have a choice in it. I think it's happening. Go ahead, Josh. It's a really interesting point you make there. And, and one, one of the things that you think about is like that people think that likes are a currency, but they aren't a currency because you don't collect them and spend them forward. It would be different if likes, uh, you didn't, you started with none, like you couldn't give any until you got some. Uh, but but with Twitter, you can uh, like as many things as you want. So it's not eff effectively not a currency. Uh, what what I, what I think are some of the positives co to come out of this, or some of the things that might come out of this, are like initial Twitter offerings and stuff like that, where people get a whole bunch of collect start collecting funds for a project through Twitter, and they will I think be able to see all the uh, all the accounts that that uh, that you know, tip them and then be able to issue tokens to those accounts uh, in other ways. I somehow like you log in with Twitter into the page to, to redeem your, your through MetaMask or Web3 sort of thing. So there, there's all sorts of things coming with this. I, I, I think it'll really uh, open up the world to a whole lot of things that we don't even can't even dream up yet. So yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, only tweets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Moving on to issue five, China's central bank. Bitcoin has no value. Can central bankers kill Bitcoin? Well, as we all know, if you ask a question in the headline, the answer is always no. So central bankers cannot kill Bitcoin. But China's central bank saying that Bitcoin has no value, continuing to attack Bitcoin after banning the currency, after banning the miners. It almost seems like the Chinese government has no control over stopping Bitcoin and is resorting to calling Bitcoin names and using mean language to try to control the foreign currency that they can't keep out of their system. Dan, Eve, can central bankers kill Bitcoin? And is the Chinese bank right? Bitcoin has no value. That that title immediately makes me think of that South Park episode, Make Love Not Warcraft, where it's like, we're dealing with someone with absolutely no life. How do you kill that which has no life? You know, if it has no if it has no value, it would be easy to kill. That's the that's the point. It's the, it, the problem is it has lots of value, so much value that it's over a, or nearly a trillion dollars again of, of value. Therefore, it's probably bloody hard to kill. And I think that that article itself references the fact that the miners are being switched. Uh, you know, there's there's signs of miners being switched back on. Right? It's just the the whack a mole that happened. The that not all the miners, as as we kind of thought, went just went abroad or whatever. A lot of them just shifted to a more subtle place. Um, maybe that we'll see. You know, China cracking down. Like in in the UK recently, there was um, a, a raid on a Bitcoin mining. Uh, operation and they thought uh, they thought it was like it was you know people were growing massive you know massive lo uh, loads of cannabis um because of all the heat coming off but obviously it was the heat from the miners so you know the, that whack-a-mole is just going to continue but you can't kill bitcoin so um uh, obviously they can keep on tightening the reins it's it's very uh, hard on censorship at the moment the ccp so um maybe uh, the social credit scoring system will have more people you know earning huge credits for dobbing in miners um and trying to kill it in in that way or, or people snitching on others uh for using bitcoin and they'll get extra credits extra digital renimbi for for dobbing in on their uh and snitching on their on their friends and peers uh for using bitcoin but ultimately it just can't be killed and, and this has been proven you know time and time again with china you'd think that because they they'd um they banned it multiple times and it just keeps on coming back keep people keep on using it um it's just not going to work. And I think that the the main thing is that you know, it, 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 it's almost like they're just fighting it right now because they have got this, their, their own digital currency that they've been working on probably longer than any other any other country. So it's the timing of that, right? They're just trying to um, put out some FUD uh, just before the release of their own crypt, their own digital currency. Um, and for them, it's a massive threat that Bitcoin's 50K. It's a massive threat if it goes an even bigger threat, double the 50K threat if it goes to 100K, um, because 
they're going to have a lot to compete against, right? Uh, but I actually had someone message me the other day uh, from from uh, an old treasury team I worked with, and they were like, oh, so this digital WAN, do you think it's going to pump? <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's, it's kind of not like Bitcoin. Um, but it's even getting to people in the West, right? It's got people, there's people now who, who are genuinely interested in, in, in getting in on this CDBC, uh, CBDC, CBDC, CBDC. Um, but yeah, you can keep whacking the mole, but it will pop out, uh, out, out from another hole. I think it must be an incredibly frustrating time to be a central banker. Imagine you started your way out, you were a teller, you were helping customers, you became the bank manager, you became the boss of the bank, the CEO, and you worked your way all the way up to central bank. And now it's your time to manage economies and regulate the world. And you've got tons of money. There is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. There's an infinite, an infinite amount of cash for you to work with. Uh, but every time you try to bring your powers to bear, uh, your life becomes a Scooby-Doo episode and you're sitting there screaming at those darn kids and their stupid Bitcoin, right? It keeps ruining everything you want to do. It leaks all the money out. They beat all your capital controls. You banned it. You banned the miners. Like Dan said, you're, you're going to use social credit scoring to try to find miners like they're doing in Texas, uh, except they're trying to find abortion people. Uh, but yeah, you're even using vigilante mobs to get your justice, to stop that Bitcoin. But there it is again, Scooby-Doo, those darn kids and their dog, ruining everything. Josh Shigala, what do you think about the central bankers? Is it really so bad? <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love them to ask all the millions of people on Binance and Kraken and Coinbase if it has no value. Uh, what they should actually do is, um, is sell Bitcoin for a buck, see what happens, see if, uh, see if it gets bought or not. Um, it's just such a, it's, it's the typical sort of nonsense from megalomaniacal, narcissistic uh, sort of leader, dictator types that like, well, obviously this stuff just doesn't have value. It just doesn't have value. Like when it, it literally has value. Like you, it lit, there is nobody, zero person, no one that will sell you Bitcoin for a buck like uh, and that that even is value like 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 it, it's the most it's the dumbest thing to just it's not dumb it's like delusional it's delusional and and uh, it's it's kind of sad that these despots have to go around pretending uh that they know stuff that they, like I don't know what to say to them, man. Like maybe go see a shrink, like find out what happened to you in your childhood or something. Cause you know, what, what's going on? You know, what? If, if you can't trust an unelected dictator, who can you trust? And uh, like our friend Amin would always say, he was always saying like, you don't need a blockchain. You need a therapist. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Moving on to the exit question. I'm not sure on this one, which, uh, We've had pretty much ridiculous Bitcoin statements from, from everyone up and down the line. Uh, who will make a ridiculous statement about Bitcoin next? Will it be the president of some country? Will it be some CEO, maybe a related industry? Dan, Eve, who will speak out against this Bitcoin scourge next? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip it. And I, and I think that uh, the, 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 the one of the threats will be if like Trump comes out in 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 uh, endorsing Bitcoin, and then that will be bad for it because everyone will be like, oh, blah, 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 you know. Uh, uh, but um, I, I I think that obviously this, the central bankers are the ones that comment on it on it most. Um, there's not many kind of people in power, obviously, apart from uh, El Salvador, that have really talked about Bitcoin, right? There's, uh, I, 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 I don't think Joe Biden's mentioned mentioned it. I know that people like Elizabeth Warren and some of the other uh, Democrats have mentioned it from an environmental perspective. Um, but uh, I, 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 Boris Johnson, I don't think he's mentioned anything about Bitcoin yet. Um, so I, I don't know. I, th I think that I think it maybe previous presidents might. But uh, or pre previous leaders might, but I think that I think that if 
it's it's being ignored largely by by certain world leaders or current world leaders because they don't want people to know about it. They don't want because as soon as someone does say it, right? As soon as one of these world leaders does say it, then it will have people talking about it. So if you don't mention it, people won't talk about it, and then they won't learn about it. So you just leave it to the you know leave it to the the minions to talk about it amongst themselves, and only when it becomes a true threat or a true opportunity, that's when they'll actually talk about it. Oh, you're mute. I want to go with a complex answer for my answer. I want to say that the Taliban, who should probably accept Bitcoin, it would probably be useful to them. They will come out against it, even though it could be useful to them. And they will cry about how it's the evil great Satan's money and all these things. And we'll have that interesting thing where the Taliban and Trump or the Taliban and uh, other economic people that we don't like, that we disagree with, they all hate Bitcoin. And then we're like, that's that's strange. That's just strange. Josh Shigala, who will come out for or against Bitcoin next? <laughs> I don't know. The Dalai Lama. I don't know. Now <laughs> then, then, How about the Pope? Come on. Yeah, the Pope. The Pope will be good. He'll say it's uh, it's the God's money. It's uh, Dalai Lama will say he'll have a little chuckle. Go, oh, 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 it's great. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I, yeah. That would be great if they asked the Dalai Lama about Bitcoin. Be curious to see what you have to say. So uh, we're reaching towards the end of the show. They keep removing products from our, our store on shop.worldcryptonetwork.com. We're down to just the World Crypto Network logo. I, I go in and I try to fix this on Teespring. It used to be called Teespring. I think they're changing their name to like Spring or something. But I go in and I push the relaunch button. Uh, but nothing happens. So I guess I have to re-upload all the images and create new things. But for right now, you can only buy World Crypto Network, the mug, and World Crypto Network, the t-shirt. They're still available at our amazing no-profit sales, uh, but they're, our, our items seem to be expiring on there. So it's getting less and less uh, exciting on shop.worldcryptonetwork.com. We'll have to try to fix that. Uh, Dan, Eve, are you ready with a prediction or a story of the week? We're going to you first because we know you're ready. I, I'm just going to go for something lame, and I and I'm going to say that I I don't think we are. In fact, wait, I'm going to I'm going to check that we're above 50k right now because otherwise that prediction isn't going to work very well. And yeah, okay, right, okay. So it's fit, apparently according to Core Market Cap, love it or hate it, uh, it's fifty thousand one hundred thirteen dollars. So I'm going to say that this will be the last time that Bitcoin goes under 50k, and that we may even hit 55 by next Friday. And I'll remember that prediction and call myself out when I'm wrong, if I'm wrong. Josh Sagala. <laughs> um, uh, uh, man, we, uh, we did pre-market distribution uh, on last uh, few, few days ago, and uh, it's like 95% or something like that sold out. So that was really, really exciting. The community came and uh, supported the project. So we're really excited about that. And the... Uh, did a couple of really great AMAs uh, about the project, so I'm I'm super happy. And one of uh, you know I, I just can't wait to get on with uh, building this thing. One thing that really I love about this space is that we haven't had to go and uh, and uh, get on our knees to some VCs. We could just actually ask the community, "Hey, what do you think of this? Let's build this," and uh, and they're like, "Yeah, let's do it." And so you know, this is really. Uh, grassroots stuff so i'm really 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 happy about that and uh, yeah i i could just can't wait to start building uh really cool tech C cypherpunks write code see <laughs> very cool uh, i just want to give a shout out this week to theo goodman uh, Theo was a big promoter of rare Pepe's. And as we've talked about on this show uh, a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, Curio cards got uh, rediscovered, which everyone knew was a good sign that what we'd be saying today is true. Rare Pepe's have been rediscovered. The market for rare Pepe's is exploding. People are telling me that Theo might buy a private island somewhere. Uh, so I hope Theo's doing very well. I hope he has a lot of rare Pepe's. Uh, there's this great one that I found this week called the Cobain Pepe. And I think I knew about this in the time, but I, it kind of slides by with all this stuff on Twitter. Uh, but what's great about Cobain Pepe is that he's wearing a Mad Bitcoins t-shirt and that Mad Bitcoins is also a Pepe on the t-shirt. So Mad Bitcoins was included in the rare Pepe collection. Uh, so it's really cool 
uh, to have this happen and to be, you know, mad Bitcoins is in curio cards and in rare Pepe's. Yeah, it's I've got cool. a mad Bitcoin's curio card. Well, you got to get the rare Pepe next, but they're even more rare. It's a series of only 100. And as it says here, as Kurt Cobain said, I didn't realize I'd made it until I saw the Weird Al video. And in the same way, it's pretty surreal to see uh, Kurt Cobain Pepe wearing a mad Bitcoin's Pepe t-shirt. So shout out <laughs> to all the rare Pepe's and the, all the NFT projects. Uh, there's plenty for everybody. I've always thought there was plenty of collectors for everybody. There was a lot of competition and dislike between the projects back in the day, but let's put that to the side. Let's just celebrate everybody and shout out to Theo. I hope Theo's doing well. Yeah, man. I, I haven't got to see Theo out tomorrow. Well, I'm there you go. Tell him, tell him we gave him a shout out and we are yeah. rooting for these rare Pepe's. And yeah. we all just want to have a, you know, we want to hang out on the private island. <laughs> yeah, totally, man. I, uh, you know, the, the, where, where are they? Are they getting wrapped into into ERC twenties, or are they being sold somewhere else? Where are they being sold? It's, uh, some action uh, people wrapping them on Open Sea. Although I've heard just a warning. I've heard a possible fake rare Pepe's on Open Sea. I don't know the details, but everyone at your own risk. You can buy them directly with a counterparty wallet, a free wallet, or the rare Pepe wallet. Uh, I don't know, uh, but people are buying them. It's happening. There's a market for sure. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Well, give a shout out to Theo when you see him. And it's I will. I will. So, for sure. Uh, but uh, sorry to everyone. Uh, Restream it isn't working again this week. We have the same configuration. There's nothing fancy about it. Nothing's changed. Uh, so I'm going to contact them, try to cancel, see if I can get my money back. And next week, we're going to stream this directly to YouTube. So hopefully that will work. But this is sad because it means everyone watching now on Twitter and our one guy on Twitch and our nobody on Facebook, uh, you'll all be left out. So make sure you tune in to YouTube. Check us out on Twitter. There'll be a link to the YouTube. Uh, but hopefully you can find the show. If not, we'll do what we do now. We're going to download the show and upload the show. So it will be up on YouTube eventually. It's just taking us longer because this strange uh, restream it. This is kind of your job. Uh, you restream things. And if you fail, I can't work with you anymore. So it's been a good time on restream it. I hope everyone enjoyed being on many platforms, but two weeks in a row failure, uh, you got to go. So uh, that's about it. I think we're out of time until next time. Bye. 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 bye.